Could there be an undiscovered planet lurking in the most distant corners of our solar system? Many astronomers increasingly believe that the elusive Planet 9 is real. And this isn't mere speculation, it's a well-founded conclusion. The peculiar anomalies in the Kuiper Belt strongly suggest the presence of a massive celestial body hiding in this region. But there's more. A group of researchers is now confident that a hidden planet must exist at the edge of our solar system. What evidence led experts to this remarkable theory? Why hasn't Planet 9 been officially confirmed yet, and why is it so challenging to locate? Have you ever wondered where comets come from? If so, you're not alone. Dutch astronomer Jan Hendrik Oort shared your curiosity. Unsatisfied with the vague notion that comets originate somewhere out there, he proposed in 1950 the existence of a spherical region at the edge of the solar system. This zone, now known as the Oort Cloud, serves as a natural reservoir for comet cores. However, while the Oort Cloud explained the orbits of long-period comets, it left short-period comets a mystery. Enter Gerard Kuiper, who stepped in the following year to shed light on their origins. The Kuiper Belt is now a fundamental concept in astronomy, but its existence wasn't officially confirmed until 40 years later. This ring of icy debris lies just beyond the orbits of Neptune and Pluto, filled with comets, frozen chunks, and small planets. Yet, the most intriguing aspect is what might be hidden beyond it, a giant planet that continues to evade detection despite extensive research. But what evidence supports this intriguing assumption, and how plausible is it that we've overlooked a fully formed planet for generations? Surprisingly, it's not as far-fetched as it seems. The supposed planet would lie well beyond the orbits of Neptune and Pluto, so distant that it remains invisible even to the most advanced telescopes of our time. Fortunately, direct observation isn't the only method experts use in the quest for new planets. And if anyone can unravel the mysteries of the Kuiper Belt, it's Michael Brown. The American astronomer has spent years exploring the icy worlds at the farthest reaches of our solar system. Among his discoveries is Eris, the largest of these distant worlds, a name he could have just as aptly replaced with Pluto Killer. This discovery played a pivotal role in Pluto's reclassification as a dwarf planet in 2006, a decision that continues to spark debate to this day. Despite the controversy, Brown reflects on his groundbreaking find with a blend of humor and pride, even referring to himself as Pluto Killer on X. 2006 marked not only Pluto's reclassification, but also the discovery of distant detached objects that set a much larger astronomical journey in motion. These objects, also identified by Mike Brown, became the foundation of a groundbreaking study leading to a revolutionary conclusion. An entirely unknown planet might be lurking in the far reaches of the Kuiper Belt. Alongside his colleague Konstantin Batijan, the self-proclaimed Pluto killer delved into the mystery of the unusual orbits of these enigmatic objects. Follow-up studies revealed that six of these objects follow elliptical orbits pointing in the same direction which was puzzling considering their varying migration speeds and differing orbit sizes. Adding to the mystery, their similar orbital inclinations were equally perplexing. All six celestial bodies have orbits that deviate by approximately 30 degrees from the orbital plane shared by other planets and objects in the solar system. Could this truly be nothing more than an extraordinary coincidence? Brown immediately dismissed this idea, estimating its likelihood at a mere 0.7%. He firmly believed it was not a possibility. At first, the mysterious Planet 9 was not considered the cause of the Kuiper Belt anomalies. Astronomers initially proposed that the gravitational influence of several massive objects, such as a cluster of dwarf planets, was to blame. However, this theory was quickly abandoned because it required the Kuiper Belt to be 100 times more massive than it actually is. As a result, the mystery needed to be approached from a different angle. After conducting several simulations, Brown and Batijan reached a remarkable conclusion. All the observed anomalies could be accounted for by the presence of a planet approximately the size of Neptune. For this to hold true, its orbit would need to be positioned 180 degrees away from the remaining planets and Kuiper Belt objects. In fact, the duo of astronomers found that more and more observations supported the existence of such a planet. Notably, 
This hypothesis could explain the unusual orbits of the trans-Neptunian object Sedna and another large celestial body without any inconsistencies. But does this truly resolve the question? Why haven't we found Planet 9 yet? Expert models suggest that Planet 9 is believed to have a mass between 9 and 10 times that of Earth and orbits the Sun at a distance ranging from 400 to 1500 astronomical units. To put that in perspective, one astronomical unit is the average distance from Earth to the Sun, roughly 150 million kilometers. While Earth completes its orbit in 365 days, Planet 9, if it exists, would take about 20,000 years to do the same. This enigmatic planet is typically beyond the reach of our standard telescopes. Moreover, Planet 9 is probably extremely faint. According to model calculations by a team from the University of Bern, its intrinsic brightness is just 0.06, while Neptune's is 0.01. Additionally, Planet 9's weak radiation is likely concentrated in the infrared spectrum, indicating a temperature of approximately 47 Kelvin or minus 226 Grausies, making it only slightly warmer than the surrounding space. Does this mean we may never definitively confirm the existence of Planet 9? Not necessarily. If the celestial body is currently at its closest point to the Sun, it might already be hidden in past sky survey images. Even if Planet 9 is currently far from the Sun, all hope is not lost. A powerful telescope, like the Vera Rubin Observatory, could still locate it. However, some patience is needed, as the reflecting telescope is still under construction. The celestial body in question won't begin operations until at least March 2025. However, the full picture also reveals that confirming this body's existence would not only add a new planet to our solar system, but also open up new realms of cosmic mystery. The existence of Planet 9 poses a challenge because, traditionally, large planets form in regions where the original gas and dust cloud provides enough material. This makes sense, as only in these areas is there enough of a reservoir to gradually form larger clumps, eventually creating entire planets. But with Planet 9, the situation becomes more complicated at exactly this point. At an average distance of about 700 astronomical units from the Sun, it resides far beyond the zone where the primordial cloud had enough material to form giant planets. The question arises, how could a planet slightly smaller than Neptune end up in such a distant and eccentric orbit? This situation challenges our current models of planet formation. It's also puzzling that, according to one simulation, Planet 9 appears to have a structure very similar to Neptune. This is the core issue. How can a celestial body develop an outer ice layer along with a dense gas envelope of helium and hydrogen if it hasn't spent enough time in the gas-rich core of the primordial cloud? If Planet 9 does exist, it must have formed in an unusual way, and researchers propose three main theories to explain its creation. The first theory suggests that Planet 9 originally formed in a more typical, nearly circular orbit within the planetesimal disk. A nearby star's passage could have then gravitationally captured the planet and moved it to its current eccentric orbit. However, the likelihood of this scenario is uncertain, as it would require the Sun's original cloud to have been much larger and longer-lasting than previously thought. There's also the question of whether Planet 9 could have been entirely ejected from the solar system during a close encounter with another star. It's possible that stars played a significant role in its current position. One theory suggests that the star cluster our Sun once belonged to was disrupted by galactic tidal forces. Before the Sun left its stellar family, it might have captured Planet 9 from one of its sibling stars, using its gravitational pull. However, the likelihood of this stolen planet scenario is just 1%. The third, and perhaps most compelling, theory is that Planet 9 originally formed in the inner regions of the solar system, much like Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Over time, gravitational interactions and turbulence could have pushed these large planets into more distant orbits, with Planet 9 settling as the outermost planet in this configuration. As a result, Planet 9 was pushed to the farthest reaches and eventually sent into an eccentric orbit. The crucial factor here is that it would likely have been ejected entirely from the solar system, unless its journey was slowed by the dense gas of the primordial cloud or by a close encounter with a nearby star. 
The discovery of an exoplanet orbiting its binary star system in a similarly extreme orbit supports the possibility of this scenario. While these models are plausible, Planet Nine remains a theoretical concept, akin to a missing person in our planetary roster. It's possible that the James Webb Space Telescope may soon provide further insights into this planetary enigma.